back to Stationaires. The version of the game that just patched this morning brought in some tutorials, and the patch notes said that the developers were actively seeking feedback. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to record my first look at the tutorials and get some feedback going. Uh, full disclosure, normally I play Stationaires under Linux. I've gone back to Windows for this because under Linux I have all sorts of key stuff going on with the windowing system and I have to move some of the default keys away. For instance, I use Alt and the mouse buttons to move my windows around. So uh, alt, holding down Alt while doing other things uh, is likely to get me in trouble. So I'm back on for Windows and I've set the key bindings back to default. So the tutorials will just kind of flow normally. I've also put us back on the 1080p screen. So it's 1920 by 1080 and we are recording full screen on that screen. So this is more uh, the sizes that they expect. And uh, let's make sure that I have set my stuff properly. Uh, let's run this 60 hertz because that's what the screen is actually doing. Field of view is defaulted to 70. I normally move that out to 90 degree field of view because I'm on an ultra wide monitor. But right now I'm playing on a 1080p monitor. So 70 is good. Uh, everything is defaulted for this display. I've turned down the music because I don't like talking over full volume music when I'm doing a, a voiceover. I'll turn that back up when I'm playing on my own though. I do like their music. Controls are defaulted. Um, we'll see how things go. The, the one thing that I do disagree with, uh, Jetpack. So they want us to reach over with our, our finger and hit J to turn the jetpack on and off. Uh, I much prefer to have that under my finger on a mouse, but I will I will leave it default for the tutorials. But I just want to let you know that's where I normally change things. Uh, I also will change the mouse control and mouse inspect to be thumb buttons on the mouse. that's about it. I'll go ahead and leave the display FPS and latency going in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Um, that's more for me to monitor than as any sort of a humble brag. Uh, anybody's system really at this point ought to be able to uh, go play stationers at the at the top level uh, of, of uh, graphics. So tutorials. Number one. Inventory and interactions. Bing. So we had some noise there as it loaded things out of our inventory and a single ping from something in the base. Up at the upper left, we see that helper hints are now on F2. And it's got, it's set to auto expand, show dismissed, dismiss completed are obviously buttons. Is open your hard suit backpack by holding left alt and clicking on it. Okay. That's over here. I have been learning to play the game by watching some YouTubers uh, do some super easy mode stuff on the moon and Mars and getting a lot of good ideas, but I still think that there's parts of the game I haven't learned because they haven't exercised them. Let's start off with the hard suit backpack. Holding left alt and dragging your tool belt into the belt slot will equip it. And I'm going to open that up just like that. So by default, as you open things up, they'll stack up here on the left and you can move them around if you want. So for instance, I could place my tool belt here um, over, on the, over on the right so it's easy for me to get to. Now because I've in learning to play this, I've kind of settled on a favorite layout of my tools. So we've got the wire cutters and the wrench down here on the lower right. We have welding torch and battery operated stuff up here. Crowbar, screwdrivers, it's all easy to find. And I will move the hard suit backpack up here out of the way. We'll be putting things in and out of that inventory as time goes by, but we don't need it 
down here. And as we open things out, uh, we may run out of space on the left. This is a fairly small screen. It's only 1080 vertically. This says, place one wall. Kit iron wall stacks are found on the locker. Two hand slots. So E to swap which hand is active. See there, the highlight changes. And it shows me an E to change hands. You drops items. Let's go grab. Oh, you want to drop something. You drops it. Now, move this further out of the way. We notice that we have a couple other pop-ups there uh, next to where our hands are. So not just Q for dropping, but it has T, but Q throws it and T places it. Well, I know that for a fact. So for instance, if you hold Q, it'll throw it, as opposed to just dropping it. Get T, you can place it carefully. And R opens up the window for the current item. And currently, because there's not much to do with the iron wall, your, your options are to split the stack in half or split one out of the stack. Anyway, digression. I digress a lot during tutorials. Uh, in some games, that gets me in trouble. I will get the tutorial in a state where it's confused. The devs for Stationair have made it clear that they're trying to do the tutorials in a way that uh, doesn't constrain the player over much. So I will continue exploring the UI as we go. Uh, it says, with walls in your active hand, use right mouse enter placement mode. Use mouse wheel to select iron wall type one. Well, it's already set. Let's see. We have wall type one, two, three, four. I see there are some lines in there. Well, it looks like we have some finished walls up here. So you can control what pattern that is. You have all your walls the same or shift it around between various looks. Let's follow the instructions. Uh, use C to rotate. So the C button basically permutes your configuration through all possible rotations that are viable. You notice it's putting it on the edges of that cube. That includes the bottom. So the notion that I've seen is that we've got this big grid the size of these cubes. And edges are like the location of the wall. So you could have a wall built on this side of the ball plane. Or you can have the wall on this side. And things that clip to it will clip to this edge. So whatever is the inside of the cube will have a harder time interacting with things clipped to that edge plane. Anyway, so we are supposed to place this somewhere. I'm going to put it up here. Uh, I think I will place it from the outside. Now you notice that aside from the helper hints, we have um, on the right hand side attached to this to the center of the screen we have rotations we delete and page down which roll it around this axis and home and end go up or down and delete and page uh, insert and page up rotate it internally Well, I'm going to rotate it to match the other ones. And there we go. So finished with iron sheets. Grab some iron sheets. And lay them on with the left bus button. All finished, just like the other ones. 
Now, next task is place and finish one frame. Iron frame will fully block a grid. So let's toss these in our backpack for now. Well, there's some frames. This is what they mean by blocking grid. It takes up the whole cube. Iron frame stacks are found in the locker. They're finished by using a welding torch and iron sheets. So we want to place this somewhere. Now I think this spot right here is where it makes sense. And we want the welding torch and iron sheets. Well, we've got iron sheets here. There's the welding torch. Turn it on with right mouse button or pressing O. And left mouse button to get started. And you can hit it twice. I know from experience that hitting it once makes the top walkable. And hitting it a second time makes this airtight. And you know, so there is a difference in how it looks. So this is a half finished frame. This is a totally unfinished frame that we can. Uh, oh, I don't have a jetpack. The uh, her. Anyway, so yeah, um, we could totally walk through there if we could jump that high. So we're going to put the. You, you'll see me jerk my mouse around when I want to move things because I, I have a button I press to get into mount this mode, and it's not the button that's default. So I have to think, and hit left alt to do it. During the during this tutorial, place a door between the laid cables. Here's the laid cables. We're going to place a door between them. It says with a kit door in your active hand, use right mouse to enter placement mode. Okay. Use the mouse wheel to select glass door. We've got glass door, composite door, composite roll cover, and manual hatch. And C rotates it around in this space. And I think that they have, yeah, they've set the cabling up so that you can have the door facing either way. I'm going to face it inside. I prefer to have my airlock wiring inside the airlock. Boom. Many devices have build states that require more than iron sheets. Look at a device with the incompatible tool, get a tool tip. Supposedly there is a mouse examine on left shift and I have yet to see it do anything. I'm going to try that from time to time. The left shift is doing it. So we need to get an incompatible device out. Say, uh, so there's our pop-up. It says welding torch and plastic sheets required. There's the welding torch. And now we need some plastic sheets. There's some. Turn it on. Uh, you don't want to leave the, to the welding torch on for longer than you have to. Because it really boosts the temperature in the area. So the next state requires crowbar and glass sheets. So if you click on an item, like in the cabinet, you have something in your hand, it will exchange it. Which is not what we wanted. So I could force this glass door open. Oh, it's currently powered. So apparently this wiring disappears inside 
this finished frame and goes up to, ah, there we go. We have lights above us that are powered. I'm noticing these things now that we're learning a little bit more about the game. Oh, pretty close. Finish the rest of the room. A space fully enclosed by walls, frames, or doors will create a room. Well, we already have some walls in place. We got a frame up there. Let's start by finishing off that frame. I hope that's the last we have to weld because the temperature really scooted up there. <laughs> Spare tool belts, got it. But this room is basically just the enclosed space for the tutorial. So, iron wall. I'm going to place these inward from the outside. I believe that's all of the... Oh, and... What do I want to put there? Got a door. It says fully enclosed the room. Let's put another frame in. Put these back quickly. If it's in your hand and you hit F twice, it will move it there. This is from the older mechanism. You notice the gray patch that's going back and forth. You select things with the roller and then an F will move it into your active hand. Uh, that's, I find that to be extremely awkward. And we have one more thing we need to weld. Temperature high. Toxin detected. Uh, apparently that killed me during the tutorial. Okay, let's try to do this one more time, and I will try to do it in a way that doesn't kill me. Working through this rapidly. Since we've already done it once, we're now old hands at it. Uh, being able to die in the tutorial is an interesting choice. Place a wall. Complete a wall. to finish a frame. I think the trick here is going to be to weld once and then wait for things to dissipate because the, the local cloud of heat will go outward. A door. We're giving us a lot of materials here. You know, just drop it in place. We need to finish off the door. The plastic sheets. Right. Wow, 
glass and the crowbar. And open it up. And now it says finish the rest of the room. Well, let's start by finishing off the frames. See if we can do that without building up the toxins to the point where we die. Okay, let's let everything cool down here. We're good, we're good. I think, is that all of my frames done? Yes, I think we're done welding. Now I can go back to walls and place the walls from the outside. Well, place the walls so that they are on the outside like that. Oh, we need one more frame there. Uh, yeah. Want to weld from the inside or the outside? I think. I'm gonna come at that from the outside, standing as far away as I can. Temperature high. Yeah, 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 yeah. To dissipate. Tutorial com. Oh, it's a tutorial complete. I didn't. I guess you don't have to make it airtight for the tutorial. Okay. We can. We can complete what I thought was the tutorial. Okay, so I didn't actually kill myself. So they just wanted me to get the frames and the walls in place. They didn't need me to finish them. This space should now be airtight. You'll notice that we don't have a helmet or a suit. So they are, they are introducing us to a subset of the mechanics. That's good. Keep things simple. So what have we learned? We've learned how to put frames in and finish them. We've learned how to put walls in and finish them. They didn't teach us anything about being airtight. I brought that on on my own. And they have taught us that you can do doors. They haven't taught us anything at all about the electrical connections, though. So we're done here. We'll go on to the second tutorial now. Tutorial number two is connections. Learn the basic survival and how to build gas and power networks. of noise as it loads us up with the starting inventory. Uh, you notice that we have an, a uniform with nothing in it. We have a locker full of gear. We have some stuff on a table. And we recognize that as a door. And that is a what? Spawn point? So, helper hints. Equip the gear from the locker. A functioning suit and helmet provide you with a breathable atmosphere. It's pre-configured for power, oxygen, and air filtration. So, space helmet. Lay on. A suit. Jetpack. Sick. And a tool belt. Eat and drink. Our hunger is down the lower right-hand corner. That's so 48%. And 71% for water. With a closed helmet, you cannot eat. Pressing I will open your helmet. 
you're playing this on easy mode, it will let you eat through a closed helmet. Visor on the orange table. Hold right mouse to consume food and water. You know, tell you is you need to pick it up first, and then with it in your active hand, you now right mouse to consume. Lose your helmet. Well, I'm going to put this stuff down first. Now, I can hit. I, I'm pressing one, three, four, five, and six to bring up those. You don't have to mouse over and click on it. You can just use the the number key. So here's all of the things that are on our new spacesuit. One space helmet just gives you the options to close and lock it. EVA suit itself, you can adjust the pressure target internally, adjust the temperature target internally. Those are down here. It's not teaching us about these, but I'm exploring. So internal, I guess it doesn't show it until you close it. Okay. Uh, you could turn some things off. Anyway, it doesn't show it. Jetpack, um, you can adjust the amount of thrust it gives you when you are going up and down. And the stabilizer, if you turn that on, that means if you're not telling it to go up or down, it will hold you at a hover. Very nice. <clears throat> anyway, what are we supposed to do? Let's close these and see. Outside atmospheres are not safely breathable. Press I again to close your helmet. Ah, and there we go. You know, it's in the lower right. We now have a internal atmosphere. Uh, internal thing it says that inside we are holding 93 kilopascals and our temperature target is 20 degrees centigrade which we are holding uh pressure targets 101 we're holding 93 yeah close enough next step is go outside well i'm going to put the food and drink inside my backpack because i might need it Last doors lead outside. Close the doors behind you to keep the air in the room. So, every time we do this, we open the door. It's going to equalize pressure between this little hallway and the main room. This external pressure is now down to 66 kilopascals. We open this door, whatever's in here is going to vent out. But the way they've done this, you actually lose some air. Wouldn't it be nice if we could pump the air from that hallway back into the base? Let's see. It says, connect the generator to the left side of the area power control. <laughs> it's got windows with no glass. It's got a wall with no glass. So this area is not not really finished. Let's look at what we've got here. We have hydroponics trays. We have liquid pipes. We have a tank of water, or at least a water tank. We have here. This tells me that the tank has... Uh, 45 liters of water in it, capacity 790. It's currently at 293 Kelvin, which is room temperature. And it's under 12 kilopascals of pressure. Uh, one atmosphere is about 100 kilopascals. This is a solid generator. So connect the generator to the left side of the area power control. That's got to be this. There we go. Cable coils. Use right mouse to enter placement mode, which I have just done. Use mouse wheel to select variants and C to rotate. Oh, well, let's see, what are our variants? We've got straight through. I'm gonna run the mouse the other way. It looks like it goes from simple to complex. So pulling the mouse toward me, we've got straight through or curve, three way. Four way, five way, six way. 
be way down to the corner. Okay. And C to rotate. Now, if you hit C, it's kind of a smart thing. Uh, we could use um, delete page down home and insert page up as it shows there to rotate these around. But if you hit C, it'll go through the useful orientations. And very often, in like cases like this, it's the first one. Open APC, insert charged battery, and turn on APC. So opening the APC, uh, the crowbar on your tool belt can pry it open. Put these back in the order that I prefer. Oh, another bit of feedback. <clears throat> If I pull something from my tool belt into my hand, when I double tap F, it'd be nice if it went back to where it came from. So, area power control has that battery slot right there. I see a charged battery cell from the locker in the APC. It's the locker. Got it. And turn it on. And we have light. Now we powered up everything on these wires, which is basically the lights. So connect the right side of the APC to the door. Okay. Overlapping cables with wire cutters in your offhand will replace the existing cable with a combined variant. So let's put wire cutters in our offhand in case we want to do that. What that really tells us is that if we have, say, a curve like this, and we want to we put that curve in like that, we can build up any variant we want by just putting in those curves, except for the straight through, which we can just do normally. So I am going to run this down here. Let's not run it across the edge there. I don't know what they have in mind. Go from here, and that gets to there. And if we go straight. And the last one should satisfy task. Now we did interrupt the power. So you notice the lights went dark for a moment. Connect the water tank to the connector in the corner. Let's put our tools back. Cable coils can go in a tool slot. You don't mention it? I thought I would. <clears throat> Drag the portable tank on the portables container. This is a portables connector. you on top. Well, sort of. Um, use a wrench. Let's see. Can we wrench it in from there? Yes. It doesn't have to be right on top for the wrench to work. Connect the water tank to the hydroponics trays. Liquid pipe kits are found in the locker. There we go. So you use right mouse to enter placement mode and left mouse to place. We're going to have to jog across here. So we want to make a curve out of this. There we go. Add coal to the generator to charge the APC's battery. But we have a whole bunch of stacks of coal here. Pick up a stack, we toss it in there. What they're not telling us is that this generator turns out a lot more current than the battery can use to charge, and 
it's going to go through the coal at speed it goes through the coal. So we're going to go back to the menu because this tutorial is done. Tutorial 3 is on atmospherics. Learn how to refill canisters and move gas around. So let's see, refill your suit air canister. EVA suit has an inventory just like a backpack or tool belt. Let's take a look at it. I'm gonna toss that up in the other side. So here's our EVA suit's inventory. Oxygen canister has low pressure, so it's, apparently that's low pressure. It will give a warning when it's removed. And the portable gas tank canister slot. Well, it's right ahead of us. And the sun is setting right ahead of us. So it's saying here, here. I'm going to drop this right in place. And we got the warning. We move the suit. And we notice now instead of 700, it's 7,000. The yellow waste canister fills with breathed out CO2 and it must be emptied when full. That's sitting at 3,000 kilopascals. Clicking on it will open its interaction window and you can open it to empty it. I much prefer to actually have something that actively pumps all the gases out. When you open it, it exchanges gases with the atmosphere around it, which means you could end up with anything random in your waste tank. Kind of unfortunate if you want to use the CO2 you breathed out for anything. You analyze the portable gas tank with your tablet. Um, portable gas tank. This is actually a portable gas tank as well. But I think they mean this one. Uh, your hard suit backpack contains a tablet. Yep. Handheld tablet has an inventory that accepts a cartridge. And we can put in this cartridge atmosphere analyzer. That. Turn it on by clicking the right mouse button when it's in your when it's in your active hand. So the room is almost totally carbon dioxide, a tiny, tiny amount of oxygen, probably from when I vented my waste tank. And this portable gas tank has 2.5 K moles of oxygen. Fill the pipe network with oxygen. Drag a portable gas tank on top of the portables connector and drop it with Q and wrench it down to, to connect. Toss that back in our backpack. There's a wrench. Need to drag that tank over to here. At the white pipe meter. And I put that in. Uh, this and this says says this pipe now has 6.3 megapascals of pressure at room temperature. It shows us 170 liters of gas in that pipe and things it's connected to. Construct a gas tank storage attached to the blue pipe using the pipe kit. Construct a gas tank storage attached to the blue pipe. I'm used to blue being the color of liquid pipes. This is this is a normal air pipe. It's just colored blue. We're looking for a pipe kit in the locker. Get parentheses, pipe utility gas. There. We'll use multiple devices. Use the mouse scroll to select gas tank storage. And now we spin it around until it lines up. 
just like that. Construct a valve to connect the blue. I, I skipped over that. Construct a valve gas to connect the blue pipe to the white pipe. Oops. Uh, actually, let's put that back in its locker. Fill up an empty canister. Take a white canister from the locker and gas tank. This pipe meter shows me that this pipe has a vacuum in it. And this pipe most definitely does not. Canister from the locker. Insert it into the gas tank storage here. The valve allows mixing between two pipe networks. Turn the handle to... Now we analyze the canister. You see the canister now has 5.8 megapascals of pure oxygen in it. Pressurize the room. Passive vent allows gas to mix between the connected pipe and the world. Construct a gas valve in the space between the white and orange pipes here. Yeah, I didn't rotate that into a good position, but this is good enough. Open it to release oxygen into the room. Trial complete. Now, things I would have done differently if they were sort of a real base. First off, I would have closed the valve leading to my little gas canister over here that would leave us with a gas canister at full nature. Second off, I would have kept my hand on this valve and shut it down when the external pressure got up too high because I was expecting there to be enough air in one of those canisters to pressurize this area. But you'll notice we only got up to 20 kilopascals. But 20 kilopascals of pure oxygen is enough to take off your suit. Still so much to learn. Can we? We're done with the tutorial at this point. Unlock helmet. Open helmet. Low pressure. Okay, so 19 kilopascals is a little low. I'm going to open this guy up. There we go. So that brought us up to 27 kilopascals, which is enough that we aren't gasping for air. And you notice that because this valve is still open, this little canister that we filled earlier was basically drained. So can we jetpack around? Uh, we don't have a jetpack yet. Anyway, that's it for the three tutorials they've done so far. Uh, looks like they have plans to send us out to do something else from here. We shall see. And we notice that we have a couple of tablets. I think this tablet is just sitting here. This one's locked down inside a, a dock. But looking at what they've built here, we can learn a little bit more. Um, this is a table that has a power connection. Cool. I've used those, but never really learned about them. Um, you can place a dock on it, and then you can wrench it into place, and it will connect it up to power. And then you can place your tablet in there, and I believe that provides power to the tablet. And we look at its inventory. It's been sitting there doing 
its job, it still has 100% battery. This guy has been sitting on the table. Its battery's gone down a little bit. So by plugging the tablet into the dock, which is plugged into the table, which has current coming in, you're not draining the battery. This gives your tablet a way to just be a permanent fixture that continues to display. And that is everything we came here to learn. Low pressure. Oxygen critical. Close helmet, lock helmet. Oops. If I go through the hatch, what you see back here is there is this generator. A transformer. And we have some station batteries. So apparently we have bulk electricity coming in here, charging these two big station batteries, which are outputting through this transformer that goes somewhere. All behind the scenes to run the lights. And it feels like I'm in portal somewhere. Anyway, so that's enough of that. I'm going to bring this recording to a close and go back to puttering around. And hopefully I will be getting some real videos out sometime soon. I will see you then.